Jesus would come up. He's going to lead us in prayer. The book of Psalms, Psalm chapter 122, verse 1 says, I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the, to the house of the Lord. Uh, this evening we are really glad to have each and every one of you here. Uh, it's a blessing for us to welcome you. Uh, we are really glad and we enjoy your presence. We enjoy each and every one of you uh, while we celebrate. Uh, not only the fact that you guys are here, not only that it's Saturday, but we celebrate also the miracle that is Eleanor and her, her family. Uh, so we want to give you a warm welcome. Feel a home over here in Elevate. Uh, we want you to enjoy uh, this beautiful Sabbath. And let us bow our heads and let us invite the Lord uh, to be with us this evening. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for everything that you have done for us. Thank you for all your blessings that we cannot count them. Thank you because you are God above all. We want to ask for your presence here this evening. That everything that we're going to do, every song, every praise, Every thanksgiving that we give may be all to your name. We want to ask for your presence in our life as well. We want to ask for your presence in baby Eleanor's uh, lives. We want to ask you, Lord, that you keep blessing us no matter what. We want to ask that you lead us today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may all be seated. Uh, thank you for coming. Uh, at this time, I want to invite Pastor Marcelo. He was about to <laughs> just come up here. Uh, Pastor Marcelo is, is not only a good friend of mine, he's also a good friend of uh, Michelle and Emerson's, and he's a good friend over here at Elevate as well. So we welcome you here, and for you is the time in this moment. Thank you. You know, the first time we came to Elevate, we were received with just so much love and a community that we didn't know that we were really making friends for life. Why are we here? We're here today for Eleanor. We're here today for Emerson and Michelle and for their story. Friends, when we do a child's dedication, it's just a beautiful and a remarkable thing because the first blessing ever recorded in the scrolls of the biblical narrative, first given to a couple, in the book of Genesis, God looks at this newly made couple. Genesis 1.27, he looks at them and he knows, you were made in my image, male and female. That's them. That's the new couple, Adam and Eve. And he looks at them, and what is the first blessing ever given and ever recorded in God's word to, to a couple, to people? Be fruitful. And multiply. And the Lord looked at you, Michelle, and the Lord looked at you, Emerson, and you fulfilled that promise. You fulfilled that promise in an experience of this birth that she had. And I'm sure we will have the chance to listen to a beautiful testimony in just a little bit. But her birth was bathed in tears. Tears of hope, tears of joy, tears that the hope that they had might have been bent, but it wasn't broken. A, a life that God gave them, Eleanor, a wise woman once said, and let, let me read that quote for you. She said this, joy has a name. That name is Eleanor. And it means God is my light. I'm quoting Michelle, by the way. That was from her Instagram. She doesn't know about that. And so why do we do a child's dedication? Is that biblical? Jesus gives us this example. His parents, right there in the Bible, Luke 2.22, when Jesus is born, what do they do with him? They brought him to Jerusalem, and they presented him to the Lord. If you can imagine the Son of God, a little baby being presented to his father. 
how much more do we not present our children to the Lord? What a blessing it is to say, Lord, I entrust to you that which you've entrusted to me. That, that's a, a blessing that we have, so that's what we do today. And Jesus, let me ask you something. Did Jesus love little children? Do you think that if our little children were running around in church, how do you think he would? The, the song of crying is what I'd call it to Jesus' ears. It was more like the song of crying rather than just, oh, there's a child just getting in the way of service. The service exists for the child to be with God. So he tells them this. What does Jesus say? He says, let the little children come to me and do not forbid them for such is the kingdom of God. And he took them up in his arms, put his hands on them. And what did Jesus do lastly? He blessed them. Mark 10, 16. And we are called as ministers of the gospel. One of the privileges that we have is to take little children in our arms and to bless them. Exactly. That's what I'm talking about. You're, you're right. You're right, Eleanor. We're here for you. We're going to get there. And so now as we are just sharing this moment together, the Bible says, Proverbs 22, 6, train up a child in the way that he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. Behold, children are a heritage from the Lord. The fruit of the womb is what? It's a reward. It's a gift that God gives. Like arrows in the hands of a warrior, so are the children of one's youth. Friends, we're doing that today. We have this chance to share with Emerson and Michelle. And I cannot wait to hear the letter of love that God has written in their lives. A letter of love that a lot of times we don't understand. Certain words. We don't understand certain terms. We don't understand, but God is there and he's writing and he's always saying, I am with you. And when he gave that first blessing, be fruitful and multiply. And he told them, and, and I wanted to see it because it exactly said, God blessed them. You too. God blessed you. And it's, it's a real miracle and opportunity that we have to be here with you. So at this time, we're kind of stepping into uh, the experience and the story and the journey and the steps that happened in the story between this beautiful couple that is with us today. So you will have a chance. I'd like to invite our media team where we'll see a few pictures and a few photos of their life, of everything that they have to offer to us. What else can you offer but your life's testimony? The greatest message ever shared is what God does in you and through you. And so they'll be doing that with us today. In the power of the Lord, and let the keeper of the stars keep your heart forevermore. Even though you might be small, it is in you his kingdom reigns, and from your mouth the Lord has made a fountain for his place and with his righteousness across your chest salvation for your head the belt of truth around you now with the shield of faith in hell and with his peace upon your feet everywhere is world will be the 
Sword you keep, your covered head to turn. Your covered head to turn. And with his peace upon your feet, everywhere. His word will be the sword you keep, your covered head to turn. It's going to be hard to talk after that. <laughs> I'd like to invite mom and dad. And as they come up, e os vovô e vovó que estão assistindo, sejam bem-vindos. Estão aqui. Sejam bem-vindos para a dedicação da Eleanor. É um prazer tê-los aqui conosco. E sintam-se que... Tudo que for feito aqui é para honra e glória de Deus. Mas obrigado pelo apoio que vocês sempre têm dado para as pessoas que vocês mais amam. Can you hear me? There you go. Yeah, um, I cry every time I see that video. Anyway, but we want to share with you um, the story behind Eleanor's birth and, and actually our journey through uh, several pregnancies and, and edifying to you that that is um, that it helps you in some in some way. Um, so I'm gonna ask Debbie and Chris at the back to put. Um, there's a, a little video that I'm just going to be talking over, um, and it just has some pictures of um, of our story. And I will ask you to pause sometimes, um, and just just so you know. But um, I just first of all want to thank Pastor Marcelo for for doing this. Um,
friends, uh, best friends from childhood, uh, who is also our wedding photographer. Um, he called us one day, and actually, he's my friend from high school. Um, he called us one day and said, you know, this, like, my, one of our best friends is moving to Hattiesburg, and he's a pastor, and he's going to be there. We're like, no, you must have the wrong city. It's like, it's not possible. So, but no, it was true. So um, ever since then, we met and, and we became friends. So those are just a few pictures of our wedding. You can let those roll because our story begins way before the birth of Eleanor. And, um, and I think that a lot of the experience, at least um, for me, has been transforming um, many of my beliefs. So you can pause there. You can pause there. So you saw some of our wedding pictures. And I just want to give you some context because that's going to help you understand the, the rest of the story. So um, God has used adversity, especially in my life. I, I, I don't know if Emerson relates, but... Um, God has used adversity to, um, to reconstruct beliefs, to teach me that many things that I thought about him were just wrong. And so that I could see that God is truly love. And it has taken me a very great um, journey to, to go through that. And at that time, when we got married, um, we had this impossible love story, right? He was living in Brazil. I was living in the States. And um, I was doing a master's. He was doing a master's. And, and it was just like one of those stories. Like, how are we going to get together? Not only that, I had applied for the green card for many, many years. And it hadn't, this, the, the green card application hadn't gone through. Um, and I couldn't leave the country because of that. So uh, if I left the country, I would forfeit my green card application. And, and actually, also, if I got married, I would just forfeit my priority in the line, and it would take, like, 15 more years for me to get a green card. So, so we were in that limbo situation for a long time. And, and what happened was that at some point, um, we were praying, and I decided that if I shouldn't have a green card and if I should go back to Brazil, that's what I was going to do. And, um, and I was just going to forfeit the green card and just be married because I was sure that that was God's leading. And why do I say that? Because it was when I gave up the idea of having, of controlling my life situation, that's when things started to work out. Um, that's when I believed that God had the freedom to work in my life because I wasn't trying to control things any longer. And I think that this relates to our, our birth story as well. Um, so after we got married, I had a lot of personal conflicts. Um, I felt like I was catching up, like, you know, I graduated, I was 30 years old because of this green, green card situation. I had all sorts of issues with, uh, going to school and, um, and I always felt like I was late in life. You know, I was catching up with my career. I was catching up. I, I. And, and my thought was, I can't have kids right away. I, you know, I will just get married. And time to my career, and then I'm going to have kids. Even though when we got married, we were 34 years old, and I wasn't really worried about age. I didn't think I was going to have problems getting pregnant or staying pregnant. And then... Um, and then I got pregnant by accident, and when, when we moved to Hattiesburg, um, it, just right then, I got pregnant, and about a week later, we went to Brazil. I went to Brazil for the first time because our, my green card situation had solved. God made a miracle, and um, we can't go into that story because it's long, but, um, but those pictures are of that time, and I didn't know, but I was pregnant in those pictures. Um, so you, you guys can, can play a little bit and, and just, so, um, I saw my grandmother before she passed away. Um, you know, I was like, pregnant. I announced it to Emerson, um, and we were, I announced it to my mom. She didn't believe it. She kept, you know, saying, no, you're not. And, uh, you know, we were happy, but I was a little bit, um, afraid that my life was going to be 
kind of stalled, to be honest. That's, and that's the trip that we did to Chicago. Th that was a, our baby moon. And um, there's just a few more pictures there of Chicago. Um, that shouldn't take so long, but uh, there you go. A few more. And you're going to see that in one of those pictures, I am in a wheelchair when we went to visit that famous building. And you can pause there. Um, and the day after that picture was taken, the picture where I'm on the wheelchair, uh, I discovered that I had lost my first baby. Um, and the, I was on the wheelchair because um, I started feeling bad. I started, you know, I vomited the whole day. Um, it was just horrible. And, and we thought, you know, nothing, ha you know, I was a little bit worried, but we thought it was just food poisoning. And, you know, and the next day I just happened to have a visit to the doctor for Zika virus <laughs> because I had been to Brazil and, and, and when they did the ultrasound, the baby's heartbeat had stopped. I was three months pregnant. Um, and it was unexpectedly so, so sad and so difficult. Um, I had never, you know, to, I had never thought about it for other women who, who have miscarriages. I never realized how deep, how deeply scarred you get. And um, so that was our first pregnancy, and we were told, just go and try again. It's very common. You know, many people just lose their first baby. And, you know, your baby probably was not normal, um, and you were a little bit older and all of that. So we found out later that the baby was perfectly normal, um, and they had no explanation as to why the baby passed away. It was a baby boy. And that is the announcement of our second pregnancy. We went to Fika Cafe here, here in Hattiesburg when it used to be open. And I snuck a little note in one of the pastries that we got to eat. And uh, you can play it. And I knew it. <laughs> <laughs> and we were very happy, as you can see. I knew it when she was like, yeah. I was like, <laughs> so we were very, very, very happy, and I didn't think it was going to be an issue. I'm saying, <laughs> he used to kiss my belly and say, good morning, baby, uh, when I was pregnant, so I was just saying, you know, this is what's going to happen next. And so this was the second pregnancy. And unfortunately, we didn't even realize that we don't have pictures of the third pregnancy. And barely any of the beginning of the fourth pregnancy because things just start to build up so much that you forget to take pictures. Um, and, and then we just went in a rabbit hole of researching what to do and why was this happening. So I don't know if you want to say anything. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but I just want to say, just want to point out um, just a few things that these pregnancies brought up for me in terms of beliefs that were inside of me that I didn't even realize I had them, okay? So one of them is that um, would it be possible that God didn't want me to have children? Maybe I would be a bad mom. You know, maybe. And I think this goes through the minds of many women who go through miscarriages or who are not able to conceive for whatever reason. Um, and God had to shatter that because that is a lie. Um, and the more I studied, the more I realized that God has been in the business of shattering that very belief when he made Sarah pregnant, when he made Anna pregnant, when he made all of these women in the Bible who, had, who were the mothers of these amazing Bible figures, like the, the people that God entrusted 
his message most carefully. Many of them were sons, impossible sons and daughters. They were miracles. And I had not realized that before, this experience. Um, and if you are a mom or if you want to be a mom and you, you are not there yet, um, and even if you never come to be a mom, what, what I came to understand is there, there are some things that we just don't understand and we can't say, oh, it's because I was not going to be a good mom or we just, we just don't understand. So it's better to not try to give answers to things that we don't have answers to. And um, so this, this was a, a big one. Um, I thought at that time that I had a lot of faith. Uh, because of my whole story with the green card and with that whole situation, I had gone through a lot of doubting, um, and I almost came to the point where I didn't believe in God anymore. But um, through all that, God worked in my heart, and I realized that, you know, I God, yes, God does exist, and I and I decided to believe, and so. In the, big, in the beginning, in the first two or three pregnancies, I was pretty sure that I had a strong faith. And I didn't, you know, I didn't question it. I thought that I dealt with the situation pretty well. Emerson had a completely different experience, I would say. He's always dreamed of being a father. He didn't understand the, the, the pain either, but um, different, kind, different set of questioning, right? And then... Um, but then there was one lesson that I learned in my third pregnancy that, um, that I'm very happy that I learned that lesson because it took, it took a long time. And it's the value of life and how, how sacred life is. And you only see it when you're so close. You only understand it when you're so close to, to life and to losing it. Um, and I used to, and I started, you know, these questions started to come to my mind. I knew, um, so for example, does God care that, you know, why, you know, is God causing this? Um, and I knew that God wasn't causing it, but the question still came to my mind. Um, and I remember one day I was recording a video, uh, you guys can go to my YouTube channel, um, and watch the video, so will I. And that song has a phrase that says, every precious one, a child you die to save. And when I was recording it, by whatever reason, I was kind of re-recording that very phrase. And the more I had to re-sing it and re-sing it and re-sing it, I, it started to dawn on me that God was saying, I have gi given my life for every life including the unborn child. And that is something that when I realized, it just, you know, it gave me chills throughout my whole body because, because I realized that God is life. And the death that is on earth is not his responsibility. Um, so in the fourth pregnancy, something else came up which is, how do I believe that I'm not going to lose another child? How do I believe that I can carry this child to term? Even though we were, you know, by then, we had Emerson especially had done so much research. Um, and we had found, you know, all sorts of these doctors and, and all sorts of care, you know, to support us. And I was taking hormones, lots of hormones. I was taking three injections a day. You guys saw the picture of my belly all bruised up because, it, and that was not, you know, very bad. That was already at the end of the pregnancy when I was not very bruised anymore. But, um, but it was very tough for me to believe. And, and I started to kind of go down this hole and thinking, I have no faith. I thought I had faith, but I have no faith. And then I was, you know, searching for, for answers and for uh, sermons and, and things. And 
I came across this quote I want to read to you. Um, the very time to exercise faith is when we feel destitute of the spirit. When thick clouds of darkness seem to hover over the mind, then it is the time to let living faith pierce the darkness and scatter the clouds. True faith rests on the promises contained in the word of God, and those only who obey that word can claim its glorious promises. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. Whatsoever you ask, we receive of him, whatsoever we ask, we receive of him because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. But this idea that the very time to exercise faith is when we feel destitute of faith and when thick clouds, that really got to me because I felt like there were thick clouds over my head, um, seem to hover over the mind. Then it's the time to let living faith pierce through the clouds. And that's what I chose to do. I said, God, one day at a time, I'm going to choose to believe that you're going to carry this pregnancy forward. And one thing um, that I, I was fighting with, I was like, well, maybe this pregnancy is going to work because of all of the work that we have done. Maybe it's going to work because I'm taking all of these hormones and maybe it's going to work because I'm taking, you know, because I'm, I'm seeing all of these doctors. And then one day I started bleeding. Um, I was about, about five weeks into the pregnancy um, and I started bleeding and I was like, uh oh, here we go again. Um, and, and I was like, God, how do I believe? Help me believe. Please help me believe that this is not going to happen again. And so I bled, you know, for a few weeks. Um, actually, for several weeks, I was on bed rest for five months. Um, but I remember distinctly feeling God tell me, trust me, and it is I who will keep your pregnancy. It's not the doctors. It's not it's, n it's not the rest. Like, everything that you're doing, yes, it's helping. Do it. But I am keeping everything in my hands. So these are, this is my testimony, I guess. Uh, we didn't, uh, we have a small daughter. We didn't have a t time to, to, <laughs> to say, okay, you're going to say this and I'm going to say that. But um, I don't know if you want to share anything, but... Um, but I just thought that I would share this with you because this is something that we wouldn't normally share, but I believe that it can help someone. Um, it, can, it can, if not with pregnancy issues, it can help someone with faith issues. Um, so I really hope that God uses our story to bless your life. So just so you guys know, did you, you heard at the end of the video, um, you heard at the end of the video that we, that we passed, you know, the pictures. Um, we were singing this song that goes like this. I will cast all my cares upon you. I'll lay all of my burdens down at your feet. And any time I don't know what to do, I'll cast all my cares upon you. So this became our anthem. Um, we would sing it every single day. Emerson would put his hand on my belly, and we would sing that. Sometimes we would just put the music and not sing because we couldn't sing, and we just try to do one day at a time. But another thing that 
came out of, um, of this whole situation is that I became more aware of what I, you know, of things I thought about motherhood that were just not helpful. Um, and one of them is that motherhood is going to, um, you know, stall your life. It's going to, um, it's not going to let you do the things that you want to do. Um, and that's why I wanted to postpone ha ki having kids. And I wrote a song this week. This was not, you know, I was not going to do that. But I wrote a song this week um, with that idea in mind. Because sometimes we think that parents are blind. You know, that's sort of like a pop culture thing, you know, saying that parents are blind. But I've discovered now that I am a parent that God chose to reveal certain things only to parents. And um, and it's just, it, it's a beautiful thing. Um, now, this song is in Portuguese. And your gu your guys, you guys will have the translation on the screen. Goes like this. Um belo dia o véu se abre as escamas se derrama desmanchão como aquele algodão doce acariciando o parapá. Já posso ver o esconderijo da nobreza e da ternura das riquezas verdadeiras. Já não vejo com meus olhos, já não vejo por um véu, já não vejo com meus olhos, vejo com a luz do céu. Você não é tesouro, não é cartão de ouro. Não é as férias em Dubai, não é, você é o impensável, mistério incontável, o toque do Deus vivo da cabeça aos pés. Um belo dia, um mais um, já eram seis, e ao nascerem novos pais, tudo mudou de vez. Eu peço a Deus que sua luz possa brilhar E que as estrelas se confundam ao te olhar Já não vejo com meus olhos Já não vejo por um véu Já não vejo com meus olhos Vejo com a luz Se eu soubesse antes, teria te buscado, teria começado há dez anos atrás. O tempo não espera, mas Deus tudo supera, constrói até castelo do que se desfaz. Segredo dos segredos, você foi mal contado, certeza o telefone era. Sem fio, a vida é impensável, não mais do que agradável. Como é que a gente vive sem amor de rio? A vida é impensável, não mais do que agradável. Como é que a gente vive sem amor de rio? Amém. Amen. And at this time, we will have really when Abraham, we will have what's called the parental blessing over Eleanor. Abraham blessed Isaac. Isaac blessed Jacob. Isaac, we have an Isaac here. And so 
today will have Eleanor's parents. And of course, Jesus, when he was about to begin his ministry, his father saw him and he looked at him and said, this is my son in whom I'm well pleased. It was a blessing always from the father to the children. And so at this time, I'd just like to invite again Emerson and Michelle. They will have a parental blessing over Eleanor so that they can pray over her because I believe that there is power in intercessory prayer. And I believe even more that there is power in parental prayer, a prayer of a father, a prayer of a mother, a mother's prayer and a father's prayer. It is beautiful and it is so remarkable. I know they've prepared a few words. Okay, so I'll start. Dear Eleanor, today we dedicate you to, God, to the God of the universe, our creator, savior, and father. You were already dedicated before, before you were conceived in my womb, in my womb, when you were born at home, and today before this congregation of family and friends. Although I had dedicated you before, I think in some ways I was still holding on to you as if you always had been mine. The truth is that you were conceived in God's mind before I even thought of having children. You're not mine. You're God's inheritance to me. And when we became parents, we became acutely aware of how much we lack to give of our ined inadequacy. What about that? Does that help? She's a worship leader. There you go. <laughs> I feel inadequate in so many ways. Wisdom, self-control, patience, creativity, responsibility, you name it, I'm inadequate. But today I'm putting myself in God's hands so that he can work in me so that I can be the example that you deserve. So you can see Jesus in me more and more clearly. This would be an impossible task except that for God all things are possible. And today I claim this promise over our lives. Eleanor, your name is not Eleanor by chance. I'm not sure if it was the name who picked you or if God put it in our hearts or if you picked the name, I don't know. But it's the only name we ever agreed on, right, Daddy? And Eleanor means God is my light. That's the meaning of your name. In a world of darkness, may God be your light and may you be the light of God for every person who comes into contact with you. Be that light on a hilltop, the light no one can hide. May you love the light. May you be completely in love and devoted to God. May you be faithful, righteous, and just like Daniel and Joseph. May you be like David who set his affection on the house of God. Like him, may you have a loyal heart to keep God's commandments wholeheartedly. May you love wisdom like Solomon. May you have roots, integrity, discipline, and work ethics. May you have Esther's courage. unwavering faith. May you display the fruits of the Spirit, always wear the armor of God, and may you, like Enoch, be a friend of God. May God be able to also trust you with his kingdom and his message of love to the world. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. We claim all of these promises today. Trying to be quick. My dear daughter, Eleanor, after so long wait, you came. Like rain after a very hot, exhausting day, you refresh our souls. God sent you as a blessing to us. God knew I needed a daughter, just perfect like you, to help me learn many new things. From even before your conception, though, not everything has been perfect, or I should better say the way I thought things should have been. But it, but it is through this process, through raising you, that we learn more about who we are and what we and how much I need to change. I've made mistakes, and I will make some more. That is not perfect, but I hope to be the best I can to raise you walking with Jesus. As the meaning of your name, may God be the light, the only light of your life. May he give you strength and courage to face your battles and fears. 
but knowing that he will be always there for you, and so do I. I pray that through the difficulties and challenges of life, you may be pure, noble, and true. I do wish you a life full of personal success, health, and happiness. But above all, above all you can achieve on this earth, I pray for you to be a true princess of God's kingdom on earth. May people see God's light, Jesus, in you and through you. May you be one of those children Joel prophesied about when he said, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams. Your young men will see visions. May you be ready to see Jesus come in your lifetime. And today I dedicate your life and all you are and all you have to him. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. Papai te ama. Daddy loves you so much. Amen. Amen. So now at this time, what I will do is we're going to have, friends, what's called a, a covenant. A covenant between God and the parents, but also a covenant between the parents and the church. So I will read this to you in the same way that when you get married and you're baptized, you make a commitment and you may say yes if you agree. In bringing this child for dedication, you are accepting a sacred responsibility. By this symbolic act, you seek to express the belief that this child is not only yours, but also God's. The congregation joins you in dedicating this child and pledges to assist you in working towards a day when this act culminates itself in the day of her baptism. This is a pledge. And it is a covenant that you are making. You, therefore, must promise to do all in your power to bring her up in the nurture and in the admonition of the Lord. She agrees with me. It's, she's just waiting for you to. Do you so covenant this with God? Amen. So at this time, friends, we will have our prayer of dedication. I'd like to invite, I know we have a few pastors here. But I will lay my hand on her. And I'd like to invite, if we have a few pastors to come up and just lay, we'll do a prayer of laying on hands in this, on this family as she also prays with us. And we will kind of stand in a, in a side. Where's Pastor Daniel? We'll invite, invite him to come up as well. And we will have a, a Pastor Darian. There he is. He's a pastor here at the church. And I'll have a word of prayer, and he could help me. Let me see. Yes, I'm going to ask my parents and my sister and brother-in-law to stand while we do that. Or you can come to the front, too. And do your parents. Okay, we're going to pray. You want to come up? Yeah, lay on the hands on the family. Yes, yes. Mom, I will lay my hands on her as well. Yeah? Okay, let's pray. Father in heaven, may Eleanor in this day receive the Abrahamic covenant of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob on her life. Father, may your unfailing love be her song and her words. Father, may, be, may your peace, the peace that surpasses all understanding, May that peace be the bed in which she rests. Father, we pray and we lift up Eleanor and Emerson and Michelle. Father, we pray that you will grant them wisdom and understanding that only comes from on high. That every word and every act and every step, may they lead and guide Eleanor to the foot of the cross each and every day. May her name not just be a name. May her name be her calling that you have for her for her to be a shining light in this world. For as Jesus is the light, he will live and shine in her little heart as she prays with me. So, Father, bless her now. For this, we don't claim any merit of ourselves, but we know that you love her so much more than we can ever imagine. Care for her, Lord. Care for this beautiful family. Hedge about them and protect them. May everything that they touch find success in you. For all of this, we pray and we dedicate her in the name of Jesus, 
May the church say also, amen and amen. Amen. May God bless you and keep you all the days of your life. Amen. Friends, thank you that you've been here. We'd like to close. Oh, I'm glad I had this here. So we do have your certificate, okay? And you'll remember that. I'm glad my wife wrote it for you, and it was me. And you just frame it and just remember this for the rest of your life. And afterwards, friends, if you could please stay. I know that they are. They, they want to take some pictures and, and just talk to everybody. So we're not done. I forgot to say something. We left a few cards um, over there in, in those two, in those baskets. Um, and those are cards where you can write a blessing to Eleanor. I was supposed to say that at the beginning, and you guys could do that throughout the service. But you're welcome to get the cards. We're going to sing a song that I wrote a long time ago for a baby de dedication, and then we're going to sing a song, a closing song. And you can do this. You can do. You can write the cards while we do that. Saber de amor que eu senti ao olhar pra você ao abraçar tipo primeira vez um dia você vai saber que o maior milagre da vida começa em você ao nascer a inocência do amor você vai ver Que amor é esse que invade sem pedir licença Que toma o coração Surpreende, mostra uma nova face do amor. Você é mais que um presente, você é declaração de amor do meu Deus pra Você vai crescer no meu amor.
amor vais conhecer Mas meu desejo é que você Conheça do amor Que te ama mais que eu O meu desejo é que você Conheça todo amor going to finish up. Have we prayed? Uh, well, we're going to do a closing prayer and we're going to sing. Uh, I'm going to invite a few people to come up and sing. We don't have enough mics for everybody, but um, but I'm going to invite Lily's family that drove all the way from Jackson to here and Morgan to sing Raise a Hallelujah, which is a song that um, that was a healing song for me in one of the miscarriages, and that Morgan actually was the one who sent it to me on the week that everything happened, so it's very special. Uh, so we're just going to sing together. I'm going to invite you guys um, to stand up, and then we're do a, we'll do a closing prayer.
testimony stays with you guys as you go through your life. Let's have a word of prayer. Dear God, we want to thank you because you're the God of life. You're the God who did miracles in the past as you do today. And we need to learn to trust you more. We need to know you better so that we will know, um, we will recognize your works, Lord. Please I ask that you bless every family here, every person, every individual here today, and that you uh, may embrace their hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thank you all for coming. We will see you next week, at least some of you next week. Um, and thank you so much for coming.